All right, hello and welcome to another expert interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from the beautiful blue skies of San Diego. And today I'm joined by Tasha Smith, who's up in Corona, California. <laughs> she said right now it's, it's an unfortunate name, but it's a great place, though, at the same time. Yeah, but I do have um, Tahiti in my background here. Um, yeah, yeah, that's it, exactly. Um, and, and Tasha is the founder and CEO of Emerge Sales Training. Uh, so she helps salespeople, sales leaders, uh, helps them with their sales process and their sales training and, and optimizing, um, optimizing their revenue potential. So, um, and a lot of this is done online, right? Or most of it's done online. That, that's right, that's right, yes. Yeah, yeah, so... Uh, and I think coming out of this, I think more and more people are going to realize that that, that coaching and mentoring and training salespeople and stuff can can mm -hmm. be done very effectively online. And in fact, a lot of you are going to be selling a lot more virtually in the future. So uh, you need to get used to the technology anyway. So what we're going to talk about today is five keys to making the sales process enjoyable for you and your customer. Okay, Tasha. So when most people hear the word sales process, the next word that they rarely think of is enjoyable. Right. That's why we titled, <laughs> <laughs> titled it that way. Well, I mean, think about why is that? When people think about the sales process, they automatically go to this place of the horrible sales experiences that they've mm -hmm. had. And they, everyone, I think, thinks. So I work with mostly um, entrepreneurs who have a non-sales background. Right. Uh, that's what I've done my whole life. And they think, okay, well, I'm really good at this thing. And they want to change the name. I listened to a podcast you did recently where people are trying to change the name of salesperson yeah, I know. because they want it to be creative. And it doesn't have to be that way. We've all mm. worked with a really good salesperson. Yeah. And so, John, how does that feel when you work with a good salesperson? Yeah, well, it, it's it's number one. Unfortunately, it's a relief because you probably had experience. Right. Or, or the thing, and, and I think that maybe that's unfair. What I think it is that you, when you come into a situation as a buyer, you're always a little bit defensive, and you think, mm -hmm. "Oh, here comes the salesperson." But when you have somebody who comes to you and who is knowledgeable, who really seems to care about what they're doing, is is educating you during the process, you're going like, "Wow, this is fantastic!" Yeah, it's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. uh, precisely. <laughs> and when you, I think what we need to do is we need to stop thinking about this idea of what sales should be from watching movies like Glenn Gary, Glenn sure. Ross, and think about how can I make this process enjoyable? Because customers, psychologically, they're not going to move forward unless they feel hopeful and optimistic and happy. Right. That's mm -hmm. what the science says. And so we need to make sure that we do make it enjoyable for us. The number one person client we need to retain is ourselves. Right. Uh, and then, you know, we need to stay in the game. And if we're not having fun or enjoying it, then certainly the person we're, we're communicating with is not. Yeah. And um, and so we came up with this model, this these these five keys. They're like pillars that can operate in any single business to build the trust, to really make it a process in which I'm not defensive. I'm super comfortable. And what's really neat about it is it doesn't really matter what someone's background has been in. Um, yeah. it, it works for, for all skill levels. So uh, would you like me to yeah, so uh, share the first one? Yeah, before yeah. we get into it, I just want to underline a couple of things that you said there is number one, you're, you're 150% correct there that if you're not enjoying doing your job and selling what you're selling, it's going to be really, really you're going to have to be some Oscar winning actor to pull that one off because <laughs> it's going to, you're going to communicate it to, to your prospects and, and you're not going to have a good time of it. And second off, I think uh, it's, it's a really important point to understand for sales. A process is your friend and not your enemy. And I think, mm -hmm. I think too often people, especially in sales, they, the minute they hear process, they think, Oh, you're going to put all these rules and everything. But really, it's an enabler. It's it's a, it's to help you move forward. So great. So let's let's get into the first key. Okay, awesome. Uh, the first key is to set up an appointment. Now, this is very standard, mm -hmm. but it's a really important that people. I run into so many salespeople that actually do attempt to sell on the fly. Right? right. They end up in a conversation and they're trying to build value via messenger and via just all these different ways and. What I really started thinking about 
uh, when I started training a lot of people is why is it that customers don't want to come to appointments, right? Or potential mm -hmm. clients. Yeah. And I think the reasons are they don't know what to expect. They don't know how long it's going to take. And they don't know if that person is going to force them to sit there until they sign the dotted line. Yeah. And um, so what I would like to pose is some verbiage that uh, works really, really well, is really simple uh, to execute, but also is 100% customer centric. And so let's say we were in a conversation and mm -hmm. you said something like, oh, Tasha, you're in, you know, you're in the training space. What is it yeah. that you do? I might ask you, I, I might just say something like, well, usually what I do, John, is set up an appointment mm -hmm. to go over you know, your sales goals, a little bit right. about the company and our most popular packages. Right. Uh, our first call will take about 45 minutes. My part will take about 45 minutes. Uh, you don't have to move to the next step, but if you want to, of course, I'll show you how to do that. Is that something mm -hmm. that you would be open to? Right. So now you, so now you have uh, taken away, obviously, as you said, you've taken away any perceptions I have. You laid out exactly what's going to happen. It's pretty non-threatening stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so therefore, I'm more amenable. But here's the point, I think, uh, just to reinforce here, uh, it's really good because what you are doing is creating a sales process that's focused on the buyer. And too many sales processes are focused on, and then, then to be honest, they shouldn't really be called sales processes um, because it's focused on the selling part of it and not on, how, on the buyer's yeah. part. Well, everything has to be, the title of my, the book I wrote is actually called Customer First. Right. Because I think people generate their sales process, like, how can I close the sale? Well, mm -hmm. first we have to, all business is finding a problem, solving it, and then getting paid. And so we're, first we have to find the problem before we can solve it, yeah. before we, we can get paid. And giving them that agenda, here's exactly what it's going to be, is is different. Everyone knows you need to schedule an appointment. And so then it sounds something like, Hey, John, this is Tasha with Emerge Sales Training. Um, how about we set up a coffee date to talk about your goals? Like, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what we have found is that phrase in the beginning, usually what I do or typically what I do has mm -hmm. been this magical phrase mm -hmm. because it sets this confidence that yeah. is just this is just what I always do. And it, it communicates social proof in a way without saying, you know, over 5,000 people have set an appointment with me <laughs> yeah. can, by saying typically what I do is uh, I meet with people about these things and it's just normal. Yeah. And what's nice about it too is, is Tash is that we've had so many varied experiences of appointments that we don't really know what to expect. And right. we often, uh, and being human beings, you know, we often default to our worst experience and think, Oh, I hope it's not going to be like that. So again, what you're doing is you're disarming the situation. Yep. That's right. That's right. Uh, ready for number two? Yep, let's go. To uh, this is not two. a two hour podcast. So we should. No, no, no. So we'll have to go through them relatively quickly. But if we don't get through everything, you'll just have to come back and talk to us again. Yeah, I'd love that. Uh, the second one is so all of these are in the appointment. And the second one is to give the agenda and it mirrors the appointment setting exactly. So I would say uh, something like, John, as I mentioned, when we set up the appointment today, we're going to go over X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. It's going to take this long. Right. You don't have to sign up for anything. But if you do, I'll, if, right, if you see something you like or if you see something that makes sense, I'll help you move forward today. Right. How does that sound? Yeah. And for those of you listening on audio, John is nodding his head. Yeah, no, I am. Yeah, exactly. I'm, <laughs> I'm vig vigorously nodding my head here. No, I'm, I'm agreeing. Absolutely. Because, again, what you have done is is just simply laid out, you know, set expectations. So you've taken any any. Um, any perceptions that I might have out of the equation because you've set, you've set expectations, which I think is critical. And to be honest, I think uh, all of us need to look at how often uh, when people have sold to us, how often have, has somebody set up an appointment with zero agenda, with zero time set on it, with, uh, and therefore you come into it not really knowing what, uh, and it's such a simple thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's important for this, agenda that it is the same. Some people feel like it's redundant, but your customer mm -hmm. or client, they don't remember. Yeah. And what it does is it establishes credibility. So and many consistency. salespeople. Yeah. They, they don't know. They don't trust the word 
right? Mm -hmm. And so if we say, this is what we're going to talk about, come to the appointment, they're like, are you going to pull a switcheroo yeah. on me? Yeah, no. Exactly. As I mentioned, when we talk, these are exactly the things we're going to talk about. And if you want to move forward, I'll show you how to do that today. Mm -hmm. And then they nod their head. And within 60 seconds, your customer or client has just real, they have just said, if I like what you tell me, I'm going to move forward today. Mm -hmm. And they've just nodded their head and, and gained agreement on that. Um, and then it makes us feel so much better presenting an offer at the end. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah because, because you're not, because you're not putting yeah. it out of left field. You've already, you've, you've signaled, you've flagged it. Yep. That's right. Um, ready for the third one? Yep. Uh, gain input. This is usually called discovery or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, we found a few questions that regardless of skill level, again, really, really help. We do a lot in the business consumer space, uh, coaching, consulting, uh, products, you know, consumer type products. And, uh, so we'll start off with, you know, what do you want to make sure we go over today, get a collaborative agenda? Uh, what, you know, what are your goals when it comes to this? We, what else people, John, yeah. not to death, but to life. Yeah. So what else? What else? What else? Um, and then the the next question that I think is great to ask that um, really was a game changer for me when I started using it is how will reaching these goals or how will solving these yeah. problems impact your overall quality of life? Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. don't want the solution. They don't want the thing. They want what it gets them. They want the health, the yeah. wealth, the status, mm -hmm. the relationships. And so we, I can say, John, what are your sales goals? But yeah. that doesn't matter, right? What matters is how will reaching these sales goals impact your overall quality of life? And then I mm -hmm. had a lady once tell me, well, that, I mean, I'll be able to visit my grandkids whenever I want. All my right. rotten kids moved away. <laughs> yeah, and, but, that's, but that's great because, again, I mean, the other thing that people forget about is motivation, right? Is that, mm -hmm. it, and if you're selling to a number of people, if there's like four or five people involved in the buying process, right, they all have different motivations. Yes, there's a company motivation, but there's personal motivations. Right. And those are, those are different. Mm -hmm. um, another great question is why is now a good time and just mm -hmm. soften your voice and they'll tell you, you've just eliminated. Yeah. Let me think about it mm -hmm. without, without saying anything um, because they'll convince you why now is a good time because you just talked about, what are their goals, how it will impact their life. And they're like, wait a second, I don't want to wait. Yeah. And when they start articulating it, when they say it, it's truth. Because when you say it is hearsay. Uh, the, fourth, the fourth key is the personalization. Um, the formulas that we use and that we teach our clients um, are a combination of have you ever, earlier you mentioned, and you might not use need this every day. Mm -hmm. So, right, have you ever been in a situation where you didn't, you know, you weren't prepared for this particular scenario. This is right. how this is going to help with that. Um, you know, obviously so many people, the features and the benefits and on and on and on and on. And it's so hard for a customer or a client to connect the dots. We yeah. can't make it so hard for them. No, no, you have to make it easy to connect the dots and it's validation too. It's remember, as you've gone through the process, it's tying, it's continually tying it back to what the original impetus was for, for the engagement. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, and then the fifth is pretty straightforward and it's always giving people two choices. Mm -hmm. um, the statistics, the science, the behavioral psychology all points to two choices. And so many people give one offer, Yeah. Um, which drives down, right? Compliance, if you want to use sure. that word, or whatever word you want to use, because then they feel trapped. I think mm -hmm. about, um, so I used to work at Blockbuster Video. Right. Um, in La Jolla, right? right? I went to college yeah, out right. in La Jolla and, you know, people would walk in and they'd have so many choices or if they only had yeah. one choice, it would be paralyzed and they'd leave. It was so <laughs> much easier when we just had two new releases, people just walk in. I mean, right now, right. The only thing I can do in my spare time is watch Netflix and I can't sure. find anything to watch. I know. Cause you have 5,000 choices. And it's our job to give the two that are the best and give them an option to move forward. And this comes from, in my business, you know, selling pretty large coaching mm -hmm. packages. This yep. comes from selling, I don't know, essential oils, right? right. It, it's, a, it's not about what you're selling. And this is what's so important. Buyer behavior and buyer motivation 
Like they're, you're always selling to a human. Yes. Instead yes. of creating a sales process for your product or your service, what we need to do is we need to create a sales process for our customer. Mm-hmm. Um, what are the things that they need to feel um, trust? Gallup has done research on what people want from leaders. It's trust, compassion, mm-hmm. stability, and hope. And our job in sales, right? We are providing a solution and making an yeah. offer and they decide if they want to trade their money for our solution. So we have to do, we have to play full offense on establishing trust, compassion, stability, and hope. And our sales process has to man it, has to match that objective more yeah. than, you know, what do I think is going to feed my ego? Mm-hmm. Um, one of our, our tenants is our customer comes first, our team comes second and our ego comes third. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Because, and I think, and I think to your point though, is if you lay out your sales process like this, all you have to do then is turn around and say, how would I feel if I was being sold to like this? And right. it's, and it's funny because we, we're so good sometimes at forgetting that we're also buyers, uh, and and behaving completely differently it's like people who uh you know will go into a customer service job and become very anti-customer right and you just think well how do you feel when you're calling up somebody so i mean putting yourself in that position say is this how i would like to be sold to and i think it's great and i like the last one about the choices because you're correct it's if you give people a couple of choices they will they'll make a choice you give them too many choices they won't make any but as you say if you only give them one they feel pressure Mm-hmm. And you can remove pressure really quickly mm-hmm. with something like, do you want, at least in my job, do you want yeah. full-time weekly coaching or part-time bi-weekly coaching, mm-hmm. right? Which is going to work, which is going to feel most comfortable for you. I think it's yeah. okay to close with, I've been in sales and sales training and leadership for 19 years, right? You can close with <laughs> which option is most comfortable for you. Mm-hmm. Right. And they're going to tell you. Yeah. And they're going to respect you and they're going to care, love you and they're going to trust you. And these are the things that make pe- make it enjoyable. Because when was the last time, John, you went to someone, you said, this is how my day was. And they say, that's fascinating. What else? <laughs> Never. Exactly. Never. Exactly. Not even my best friend. Not well, my best friend. So that's my business partner. And she is a trained therapist and oh, sales okay. manager. So she's got that wired. But I've never mm-hmm. heard anyone else I care about. Right. No, to it, say. Right. What else? Exactly. And let me make sure. I, let me make sure I really understood what, what just happened to you at work today. I mean, nobody yeah. does that. Nobody and, does that. Um, we are paid to create understanding. We're not paid to sell. We're paid to create yeah. understanding. And, and we need that, to remember that that's a two-way street. Yeah, yeah. And I like that, the fact that uh, you're using those words, like, which are you comfortable with? Because at the same time, you're also acknowledging that, you know, making a final dis- purchasing decision is a little bit uncomfortable, right? It can be uncomfortable because you are taking some sort of a risk, as good a job as you may have done as a salesperson. The buyer still has to finally cross that hurdle has to make that decision you know they get a little bit of a little bit of risk aversion comes in at that point so when you're using language like that it's it's also helping helping it's helping comfort them yeah absolutely so we did it well, five we did keys it. Look at in, that. and record time exactly this is fantastic listen we could we could do a whole uh, we could do a whole podcast on each one of them and maybe we will someday but uh but listen this has been fantastic tasha um as as usual, all of Tasha's information will be in our contributor bio below. But before we go, Tasha, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your organization. Sure. So we, uh, my company's name is called Emerge Sales Training, and we do one-on-one coaching uh, for entrepreneurs. We do have um, an entire membership site devoted to the network marketing industry. We provide mm-hmm. one-on-one coaching. Uh, across the board. And so uh, there's a couple ways we have, uh, we wanted to give you guys a template, a gift that include the five keys. Uh, and so you can get that by going to, let me see if I can, it's uh, emergesalestraining.com slash sales pop. Excellent. Uh, and we will, and e- we will include that link as well. Easy download. Uh, if you actually are like, I would love some one-on-one coaching, that's what we do. 
you can just text coach please to 44222. Yeah. And I would just say uh, that one-on-one coaching is so critical. I would ask you to think about how much money and time do you invest in your hobbies? Just ask yourself that. All right. You probably do. Yeah, it's probably things. You probably take lessons. You probably have members of all of these mm-hmm. other things. How much money do you and time do you invest in your job, in the thing that puts bread on your table? So, hey, there isn't a, there isn't a better time than right now to be to be getting coaching because uh, it's going to be very competitive again out there. So I would, I'm a big advocate and I would certainly say like, check out Tasha and, uh, and her one-on-one training organization. Um, listen, this has been fantastic. Uh, my name is John Golden, sales pop online sales magazine, pipe CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you.